Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel Gluppen. I'm your host, Po Yang. I have now just arrived at Yangzhou East train station. And that's going to be the topic of this video. The best high-speed train system in the world. You see, when I was traveling around the world, I've experienced the train systems in Europe and US. I can say with confidence that China's high-speed train system wins by a mile. And I think that is also the consensus on YouTube, just like these videos. We even asked ChatGPT to write an article about the history of Chinese high-speed train network and its achievement. And ChatGPT also speaks highly about it. So when I was preparing this video, I was thinking, man, how can I do another train video without talking about the same topics? And how do I explain to people Chinese trains are better not only because they are built decades after the West. So in this video, I will show my experience traveling to two cities, Yiwu and Yangzhou. I will show you how cheap, fast, punctual and comfortable train is in China today. But more important is to explain the improvement in experience during the last 20 years from a customer perspective. I think that's where this video is truly unique compared to all the great Chinese train videos on YouTube. So let's begin from our starting point, Shanghai Hongqiao train station. This train station is part of the Hongqiao Transportation Hub, which consists of Shanghai Hongqiao International Airport, the intercity high-speed Shanghai Hongqiao train station, three metro lines, and the local and regional bus stations. Built in 2006 and completed in 2010, every day there are around half a million people traveling through the Hongqiao Transportation Hub. I remember the first time I showed such a train station photo to a French colleague. He asked me, Boyang, where are the trains? Indeed, in China, since there are so many people, you have to wait in the train station hall. And only about 10 to 15 minutes before the train departures, you are allowed to access the platforms. In most European train stations, however, you can walk directly onto the platforms and wait right beside the train track. Today, most of the Chinese train stations are clean, modern, and spacious. But that was not the case in the past. 20 years ago, when I was a teenager, train stations are dirty, shabby, and crowded. What is worse is that train stations are full of pickpockets. I remember when I was a teenager, I was once talked to right outside the train station. And I didn't even respond and walked away. A minute later, I realized my iPod was stolen. Funny enough, when you go to the train station police, they tell you it's normal and even they get pickpocketed. Today, that's no longer even possible in China. Just 20 years ago, buying a train ticket was such a hassle. You need to go to one of these booking offices and queue up to an hour to get these tickets. And then go through the crowds to board a completely packed train. Now, since 20 years ago, Chinese switched the method from buying tickets in booking offices to buying through phone calls, and then to buying through the official website. Until today, you can buy a ticket in the app and then directly walk through the gates with your ID card without a ticket. Now we have passed the gates and are walking to the platform. This is a second class cabin. There are five seats per row. And then now we are entering the first class, which is four seats per row. Now we are on the way from Shanghai Hongqiao to Yiwu, and we have departed exactly on time at 8.22. Today, a high-speed train between Shanghai Hongqiao and Yiwu station is about 270 kilometers. And by car, that takes about three hours. 
but by high speed train, it's only one hour 40 minutes, half the time needed. It is also much cheaper. A normal second class ticket is 123 RMB, first class is 201, and special class is 227. Now, if that is not cheap enough for you, take the regular train, which runs around 140 kilometers per hour, and they cost only a third of the high-speed trains. Now, five minutes after departure, the train has reached 300 kilometers per hour, which is the regular speed for this train, and actually slower than the maximum speed of 350 kilometers per hour. You see, when living in Germany, I was such a car guy that I would not hesitate to drive from Munich to Frankfurt, because that autobahn is fun and faster than train. But in China, it's the opposite. The highway comes with a 120 speed limit, and trains are faster, more comfortable, and saves you half the time. And you can also work on the train. Also, since taxi is much cheaper in China, you can just arrive at a city and take a taxi to your destination, and not needing to worry about parking. So that the benefit of driving your own car is also gone. We are now about to approach Tongxiang Station. And according to the official 12306 app, we are approaching the station with one minute delay. We are supposed to arrive at 9.01 and the train stopped at 9.02. You see, in China, delay is calculated by minutes. Today, the high-speed trains in China have a 98% departure on time rate and a 95% arrive on time rate. For the most advanced Fuxing series trains, the departure on time rate is 99% and arrival on time rate is 98%. I think you just need to compare it with the train in other countries you are familiar with and you will understand what that means. After a two minute stop, the train left Tongxiang station. In the end, despite behind schedule for one minute during the journey, we eventually caught up and arrived our station on time. Today, China runs the largest high-speed train network in the world, with high degrees of accuracy, safety, and comfort standards. And that's why I believe China's high-speed train system is the best in the world. So we have shown one of the largest train stations in China and the regular cabinets. Let's now have a look at the train station in Yangzhou, a third tier city in China, and the business class, including its services. Even though Yangzhou is only a third tier city in China with 4.5 million population, it was one of the wealthiest cities in China with a rich history and culture. It is also one of the City of Gastronomy awarded by UNESCO. So if you are interested, make sure to check out our videos about Yangzhou. Within Yangzhou station, the business class lunch was a disappointment. But within the hall, the massage seats and the free charging sockets came in really handy. So we are now on the high-speed train from Yangzhou East Station to Shanghai. So let's have a look how is the business class here. As you can see, there are only five business class seats on this train and it's very spacious. The seats are very similar to the business class seats on an aircraft. And you can also lay down the seats completely so that you can sleep on them. You have all the necessary devices like electric socket and a dedicated reading lamp. Within the business class, you also get some drinks and a pack of snack. Let's have a look what's inside. Fried rice, dried beef cubes, dried pork slices,
flavored peanuts. Almonds. And some biscuits. Even though the business class was so comfortable that most people in the cabinet was sleeping, not everything was perfect. For example, there were no shelves above for luggage. Even though there was Wi-Fi in the cabinet, it was so slow that you can only check emails, but nothing else. I also wanted to order food on the 12306 app from a train station and get it delivered to my seat on the train. And even though I heard this is possible, it somehow didn't work for me. All restaurants on the app were unavailable. Not sure if it is because it was too late on a Sunday night. But these are only small issues. Most important is that we came back to Shanghai exactly on time. Not like the trip to Yangzhou that was six minutes late. So that's it for our video today. What do you think about the high-speed trains in China? Do you think it is the best high-speed train system in the world? If you have any comments, questions or topics that you would like to see in our next videos, feel free to comment in the section below. So if you enjoyed our video today and our channel, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel and make sure to share so that more people can see our awesome videos in the future. Here we inspire learning, exchange and business. Oh, one last tip. If you know how to use ride hailing apps in China and can find their drop off location, just don't use taxi. That is double the price and you also need to wait in the long queue. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video.